In this question, a scientist wants to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction for a fictional reaction involving fictional elements with the symbols A and D. Our first step is to balance the equation. I'm not going to go through that here because I'm going to assume you're confident balancing equations by now. If you need more practice on that, head back to unit 14. So for balancing this equation, we just need one of each thing. In this question, instead of being given the enthalpy of formation for each compound, we're given the bond energies between our elements that are involved in our reaction, and we're given the Lewis diagrams of our compounds. In this question, instead of finding the enthalpy of formation of our products and reactants, instead we're going to be finding the total bond energy of our products and reactants. When our reactants form into our products, firstly the bonds of the reactants get broken, then the bonds in the products get made. So when the bonds of the reactants are broken, we have some enthalpy change. And when the bonds of the products are made, we also have some enthalpy change. So we're going to be calculating that using the Lewis diagrams provided and the bond energies provided. One other thing we need to know is that breaking bonds uses up energy. It takes energy to break bonds. So breaking bonds, this is endothermic. In other words, it has a positive enthalpy change. On the other hand, making bonds, that is exothermic. In other words, it has a negative enthalpy change. It releases energy. So first let's go ahead and calculate the enthalpy change when the bonds of the reactants are broken. So in our reactants, we have a A2 molecule. An A2 consists of two A atoms connected by a triple bond. So we're going to need to have a look in our table down here. Find the AA triple bond. Here it is. That has a bond energy of 386. So our bond energy for... A2 is just going to be 386. What about for D2? So D2 is two D atoms with a double bond between them. So we're looking for a DD double bond. So again, let's look at our table. Here's our DD double bond. It has a bond energy of 561 kilojoules per mole. So we can fill that in here. Lastly, in our A2D2 molecule, we have one double bond between a D and an A, another double bond between a D and an A. So we've got two double bonds between a D and an A, and a single bond between two A's. The double bond between the D and the A is 436 kilojoules per mole for the bond energy, and the single bond between the two A's is 301 kilojoules per mole for the bond energy. So I'm going to label those on our diagram. We've got 301 for the AA bond. We've got 436 for each of the AD double bonds. So we can go ahead and add those together. We've got two sets of 436 plus 301. That's going to give us a total energy of 1,173 kilojoules per mole. Awesome, so we found our bond energies of each of our compounds. So next, to find the enthalpy change when the bonds of the reactants are broken, we're going to have to add up the total bond energy for each of our compounds. We're going to have to use the coefficients from our equation to find the total bond energy of our reactants, and that's going to be positive because it's endothermic when we break bonds. So the enthalpy change when the reactants are broken is going to be 1 times 386 plus 1 times 561, which gives us 
947 kilojoules per mole. Let's enter that here. Awesome. For the total enthalpy change when the bonds or the products are made, this is going to be exothermic this time because we're making bonds, so it's going to be negative. And again, we're going to need to add up the total bond energy for the compounds in the products multiplied by their coefficients. Now we need to find the enthalpy change when all bonds or the products are made. This time it's going to be negative because we know it's exothermic. We release energy when we make bonds, so it's going to be negative. We're going to multiply the total bond energy for our compounds in the products by their coefficients and add them together. So this time, since we just have one compound and we've only got one as our coefficient, we're going to have one multiplied by 1173. And that gives us negative 1173 kilojoules per mole. So we can fill that in again in our answer box. Finally, to find the enthalpy change of our reaction, all we need to do is add together the energy that was absorbed when the reactant bonds were broken and the energy that was released when the product bonds were made. So all we're going to do is add those two together. So it's going to be 947 plus negative 1173. That's going to get us negative 226 kilojoules per mole. Awesome. Finally, we're asked, is this endothermic or exothermic? Since it's negative, that means energy is being released, which means it's exothermic. So to summarize, in these questions, our first step is to balance our equation. Then we're going to look at each of our compounds and calculate their total bond energy using the table of bond energies and the Lewis diagrams. Then we're going to calculate the energy change when the bonds of the reactants are broken. To do this, we simply multiply the bond energies of each of our compounds and the reactants by their coefficient in the equation and add them together. This is going to be positive because breaking bonds is endothermic. It takes energy to break bonds. We're going to do the same thing for our products, except this time it's going to be negative because making bonds is exothermic. Finally, we're going to add those two values together to get our enthalpy change of reaction.